some Cora. So you're probably wondering why I grew up a third of a goatee and have all this crap on me. Well, today as I'm doing this video, or at least the time I'm doing this video or releasing this video, I went trick-or-treating and I went as Avatar 1 from Legend of Korra. To those of you who don't know what Legend of Korra is, that's your fault, not mine. But today I'm going to play a little bit of catch-up and I'm going to review four, or three technically, but really four episodes of Legend of Korra Book 2 Spirit, seeing as how t tomorrow... Friday, November 1st, the 1st of November. Kind of redundant, that, just... Whatever. Uh, tomorrow returns brand new episodes of Legend of Korra after a one-week break, which is considerable. I'm fine with one-week breaks. I hate, like, three-week breaks or month breaks or year, year breaks, whatever. Just one-week break, and that is it. And it's been officially confirmed that this will be the only one break that the season has, which I'm perfectly fine with. I believe the first season of Legend of Korra also did that which I'm perfectly fine with. Um, and then the permanent release date for uh, the rest of the season will just be 8 p.m. on Nickelodeon, even though it was 7, then 8.30, and now 8. And Nickelodeon is wondering why they have such low ratings. Get your shit together and release it at a standard fucking time. Stop jumbling it around, please. That would help. Um, but yes, that is, um, the permanent release date for future episodes, 8 p.m. on Nickelodeon, channel 61 to certain channels, uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, enough talk about that, let's talk about the four episodes of Legend of Korra I'm going to be reviewing. The one episode that was before The Sting, The Sting, and Beginnings Part 1 and 2, which I'm just counting as four episodes because Beginnings Part 1 and 2 are two episodes put in the one big one-hour special, and get it, and... So yeah, I consider it four episodes, not three, four episodes, so let's get right to it. Um, and the reason why I'm bunching all these episodes together in just one big Legend of Korra catch-up super special is because I really don't have anything to say about the two episodes that come before Beginnings Part 1 and 2, which is The Sting, and uh, I can't at all remember what the name of the episode that came before The Sting was, so I'm just going to call it The Episode Before The Sting. Um, really, those two episodes were really bad. I really didn't like those two episodes at all. Really, really I can just sum it up like this. Uh, Korra's still a bitch in the episode before The Sting and in The Sting. It was really just filler. Because that episode, uh, and again, this will have some spoiler alerts for those of you who haven't seen The Legend of Korra recent episodes, and if you haven't, again, shame on you, but if you, you know, haven't, I'll put a link in the description to those episodes. Um, so yeah, I'll try to put a link in the description. Uh, right now, it's kind of hard to, but I, I will try my best. Um, but yeah, um, it, it, The Sting would be filler, and whatever episode came before The Sting was really just Korra being an absolute bitch. I'm sick and tired of saying this, so I'm not even going to, you know, give it any attention, because it really doesn't deserve it. I hate this character, Korra. In fact, that episode just made me, just sealed the deal, and just made me say, you know what, fuck it, I'm done with this character. Which is sad to say, because again, like I mentioned in a number of my other Legend of Korra episode view, uh, videos, um, it's the main character, the title, the character whose name is in the title, and it's really a shame that I have to end up hating this character, but that's just the way it is, because she's an absolute bitch, and one of the creators of the show, I believe, Brian Knitzko, um, had come out and said that, you know, he's frustrated with the frustration, uh, that the fans have towards the character of Korra, kind of confusing, but just roll with it, um, and he said that it's we're making this character the way she is in this season because this character needs to go through drama or else the character is just boring and not really doing all that much. And I agree with that to an extent. You can have a character go through drama. You can have a character go through things in a, you know, book, in a book, movie, cartoon, TV series in general, whatever, without having them be absolute assholes, okay? There's a difference between putting them in putting them through turmoil, having them go through drama and go through changes, and them just being absolute dicks, okay? There's a big difference. Um, so, but again, I agree to what Brian Knitzko is saying, that saying, you know, to an extent. You can have characters go through drama, that's fine, but having them just be assholes to, like, everybody, it's just annoying. In this episode, the episode before this thing, uh, sealed the deal for me, you know, 100%, because she was just a bitch in that episode, and she was making some of the dumbest decisions ever, and again, She's the Avatar. Why is she making these dumb decisions? Like, she is pretty much just calling out and just harassing, um, you know, pretty much harassing the President of the United Republic 
and almost causes a giant insurrection, as they say in the episode, against the president by trying to steal his army to go fight in the Civil War between the North and the Southern Water Tribes. Because, you know, that's just what any Avatar would do. Just, you know, put a bunch of people's lives in danger just because of their parents. And I know a lot of people will be saying that, you know, oh, it's her parents, you know, oh, it's, like, she has a perfectly legitimate reason to be brash and, you know, to, to try to cause an insurrection and take the army and go fight. Well, okay, that's, okay, fine. But, really, it's her, it's just her parents and, you know, her people. But if she does this and she actually does take the army and go fight and, you know, cause a civil war, it's going to hurt every single person pretty much in the world and in the long run. It's going to hurt a shit ton of people. I mean, the people fighting in the war, the people caught in, you know, caught in between the war, just innocent civilians that are pretty much, you know, sort of neutral on the whole situation, they will be hurt and thousands will be hurt. And you know what? Just this, that really isn't worth, you know, her parents, really. I mean... At least in my opinion. I mean, the, the like, ever heard of the need to the many outweigh the needs of the few? That's the situation. I think that her, the lives of her parents really aren't that much compared to the lives of pretty much everybody else caught in between this war and all the other people, you know, on this war. Because again, as I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, people will take sides. People will take either the Southern Water Tribe side or the Northern Water Tribe side, and people will break apart, and they would probably even go to an even bigger war, like the Hundred Year War in the original series. So really, Korra's just an idiot in this episode. Korra's just an idiot overall in this season. I get it. It's her parents, but the needs of the many kind of outweigh the needs of the few in, in this situation. I mean... It's either her parents' lives or pretty much the entire world going to war. I mean, pick and choose, dude. It's just stupid. And that's why I really hated this episode. I mean, she almost caused a huge insurrection because, Oh, I want to go save my family. and Oh, I want to go save my people. It's just going to cause an even bigger war. Either way, it's going to end up fucked up. And it's not going to work out the way that you intend. So... Yeah, that's why I really hated that episode. And Korra was just an absolute bitch. And the sad thing is, she actually made Mako right. Yes, I dare say it. Mako, the man whore, M Mako, the man whore. He actually was legitimately right in this. And you know what? I'm sick of people saying that Mako was a man whore. And I'm sick of having people say that Mako was a horrible character. And Mako cheated on Asami. Korra kissed him first. And yeah, he may have kissed him back, but what was he supposed to do? Really, it was Korra that made the first move, not Mako. I can totally understand that would be behind everybody that says Mako is a horrible character. 100% if he kissed Korra first, but he didn't. It was Korra. So, get the fuck over it. Korra is the horrible character in this situation. So, get the fuck over Mako being a man whore. If it was really Korra, she's just a, a whore. Plain and simple. Just generic whore. So, get over it. Hey, Korra. And the season has plenty to hate Korra of. So, get over it. Please. It's annoying. He's not that bad of a character. And in this season, he's right. Korra's an absolute bitch, and he's actually right. Like, in this episode, he sees a couple firebenders with a remote uh, explosive detonator running out of that Water Tribe peace building uh, when the Southern Water Tribe is having that big peace rally out of the building. And it blows up, and he says to Korra, I saw two firebenders running out of the building right before it blew up holding this remote detonator that probably blew the building up, and Korra just pretty much fly out says, No, you didn't. I know what's up. It was a Southern Water Tribe. Doesn't make any sense. You're dumb, Mako. I pretty much am not at... I'm not at all exaggerating that. That's really what they should have just had her said. It's really what they did have her say when you get to the bottom of it. That was stupid. That was really... Really annoying throughout the whole episode. It's like, oh no, Mako, you're wrong. Even though you're the cop and have pretty m and have way better detective skills than me, you're wrong. It was annoying, and that's this, this that's core throughout this whole first half of the season. It's just, oh, I think something's up. No, you don't. I'm right. Just gonna have to deal with it because I'm the Avatar. You're gonna have to deal with it. It's annoying. That's why I hate this character, Korra. She's a bitch. She's a know-it-all, apparently, now. And she's just annoying. Makes the dumbest decisions ever. I hated this personal episode. And, that, and you know what? I haven't given any of the other episodes any ratings before. But you know what? I'm going to give this episode a rating. It's a 1. It's a horrible, horrible, really just not that great of an episode. 
I mean, it's not horrible. Uh, it, okay, I take it back. It's not horrible, but my god, it is so annoying and stupid and just irritating. I think, and I'm only giving it a one because General Iroh was in it, and they mentioned the Fire Nation. And that's really sad when you have to get callbacks to actually make your episode viable. This episode was just bad. I know it's unfair giving it a rating, seeing as how I don't give all the other episodes a rating, but you know what? That's just how much I hated it. I really hated this episode. And then we get to The Sting, which, you know what? I'm going to give this a one also. I, this episode was just really just filler. It, it really was just that. If there's a definition for the word filler in any series, this, this episode has to have a picture by that definition. It is just fucking filler. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, well, it's not filler because they... Say that Varric, and you know what, I'm not even going to call him Varric anymore, because you know he's a villain, so villain starts with V, and Varric has a V in it, so Varric. Varric's now officially a villain. Yes, and a lot of people will say that it's not filler, because Varric is apparently now a villain and everything, and my thoughts on that, I actually really don't mind that. I think that's a really unexpected route. In fact, I like the way that they're doing this. I mean, Varric was personally my favorite character so far this season, at least my, you know new favorite character, at least. Um, and now that he's a villain, I really don't mind that, because it pretty much makes up for Unalak being an obvious villain, an obviously, you know, bad villain. It's kind of redundant, but hey, an obvious villain. So I really don't mind that, really, in the slightest. I think that's actually kind of a cool decision. It really caught me off guard and actually made me both sad and very happy, because this that made me think this season can actually go in a really great, really unpredictable, uh, and a really great and unpredictable, you know, way throughout the whole rest of the season. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but this episode was really just filler. I mean, the episode was really just there just to establish that Varric is now a bad guy. Either, you know, he's there helping out Unalak, he's like a double agent, or he is actually the main villain and Unalak is taking orders from him. Really don't know. Maybe we'll find out in the guide tomorrow, but, you know, who knows. Um, but I like this idea. But really, the only reason why this episode was here was because we needed to establish that Varric was the villain. And you could have done that in 15 minutes and had the rest of the 15 or so minutes be an actual episode. That's that's this episode's big problem. It has to, like, the episode is this. The southern, the northern water tribe is taking all of Asami's mecha tanks. They're supposed to be going to help and aid the southern water tribe. Um, and they're, the southern water tribe are, you know... Ha you know, uh, causing a big, uh, or taking over the ships, full of the mecha tanks, and now Mako and Asami have to make sure they don't. So they fill up a ship full of mecha uh, well, they don't fill up a ship full of mecha tanks, it's a ship that's just supposed to be a Trojan horse, and, uh, they hire also a bunch of gangsters. Yeah, because that's somebody who I would definitely trust, gangsters, to protect my very valuable cargo. Now you see why I really hate this episode. Gangsters! They hire gangsters. The main heroes hire gangsters. Stupid. It's really, really dumb. But they get the gangsters to make sure the ship is alright in case the southern water tribe, the northern water tribe, actually does take over the ship. But turns out that the gangsters actually double crossed them and they were paid off by some unknown person, Varric, uh, to again sort of be another Trojan horse. Or uh, just to be a big distraction so that Varric or whoever can go invade the big giant warehouse full of the mecha tanks. Oh, really? The gangsters that you hire double cross you? What a giant shock, you fucking idiots. Um, and that's the episode right there. The episode was filler because that is something that you could have established in like the first 10 or 15 minutes. And another reason, and a big dead giveaway of why this is just a big filler episode is most of it, or the first, like, ten minutes of it, is just showing Mako, you know, uh, showing Bolan, I'm sorry, uh, be Nuttuck, the hero of the South, which a lot of people are saying is, like, saving these episodes and is actually really funny about these episodes. I don't, I don't give a shit at all, okay? He's, he's a film star. Great. I don't care. Can we get back to the main plot of the Civil War going on? We have a civil war and spirits. We have two tribes and spirits going to war, but I'll focus on Nuttuck, Hero of the South, a giant parody of Batman 19, 1940s Batman serials and Captain America. Wait, what? Okay, now you got me interested. 
I mean, as great, I mean, I like that it's sort of a nice homage to, you know, the old superhero or, you know, seri you know superheroes or sci-fi serials from, like, the 1930s, like, you know, uh, uh, Flash Gordon or the Batman serials or the Captain America serials. But really, I don't care all that much about it. I mean, it's a homage, and I do admire it, and I will give them credit for it. But I don't care. I really want to see the main plot going on. I really want to see these characters being developed, these characters, you know getting somewhere and this plot going somewhere and really this episode just didn't show that here's what here's the episode in a nutshell this is a way that the show could have been done this particular episode the sting okay so mako and asami hear that the northern water tribe are invading the ships full of the mecha tanks okay fine mako goes to bowl lane during a shoot of nuk tuck hero of the south he sees the explosions go off figures that oh my god it's Varric because he uh hears that the Northern Water Tribe are using detonators on the ships, and immediately goes to Varric. I just explained the whole episode to you right there. That could have been the episode. That could have been literally the first five minutes of the episode. You could have had the rest of the 25 or so minutes be something more important going on that would have furthered the plot and lessened the number of episodes. Boom! There you go. This episode I hate. It was fucking filler, it was annoying, it was tedious, and it just pissed me off. It was such a boring episode. I absolutely just, I hated it. I really just despised this episode. And again, like the last episode, I'm giving it a 1. That's it. And I really don't know why I'm giving it a 1, because it's really, like, unlike, you know, the episode that came before this, really doesn't have anything in it that made me think, oh, I need to give this a 1. So, at this point... I was getting pissed. Like, I was getting really, really pissed off with these Legend of Korra episodes. I mean, here's the thing about the Legend of Korra. It's not that it's a horrible show like, say, Uncle Grandpa, where it's just a show that has no continuity whatsoever. Because it's my favorite show that's running on TV right now, okay, that hasn't been canceled. It's my favorite show that hasn't been canceled yet. Alright, it's the only show that I actually look forward to on TV every single week that still airs on TV every single week. But for Legend of Korra, this is just not good. But for, you know, compared to other shows that are absolutely horrible, this is a great show, okay? This is, like, the best, probably, cartoon for kids and adults and teenagers on TV. But for Legend of Korra and for Avatar standards, it's really just, a, you know, it's not that great so far. Not even so far. We're over halfway through the season, so this season kind of sucks. And in the last few episodes, they better make up for it. And with these two episodes, I was getting pissed the fuck off, okay? This was annoying the piss out of me. And I was really thinking to myself, if they don't pick this shit up soon, I'm just going to leave this flat. I just am going to get pissed off and just forget it and not even continue it. Will I give the uh, next season a chance? Sure. But this season, just really not grabbing me. And we're over halfway through the season. It's annoying the piss out of me. So then, we get a one-hour special that, really, when you get down to it, is also, in a way, filler, but actually furthers the plot more than the episodes set in the present, because these two episodes, beginnings part one and two, are prequels, essentially. They take place 10,000 years before the events of Legend of Korra, or even Avatar The Last Airbender, and you would think that these two episodes... These two episodes that take place 10,000 years before anything that is going on in the actual plot are, you know, filler episodes. But honestly, these are the first two episodes in a while that actually further the freaking plot. That is sad. I mean, it pretty much explains why the spirits are acting up and why the spirits are breaking from the spirit world and terrorizing the, you know, the physical world, the, you know, the... The physical world. And I love these two episodes. These two episodes saved Legend of Korra Book 2 for me. They saved this and they made me so happy and so excited for future episodes. And a lot of people have been really saying that they want like a Legend of Wan or Chronicles of Wan, uh, you know, spin-off Avatar series. And honestly, I'm inclined to agree. I think that's a great idea, especially with the animation in this episode. Good God, was the animation in this episode beautiful. In fact, this is probably the best piece of animation I've ever seen, period. 
It might be. It, it, it's definitely one of the best pieces of animation I've seen in anything animated related, whether it be an animated movie or cartoon or whatever. This is some of the best animation I've seen from anything in a long ass time. Okay, I love the style of this, of this, uh, you know, past world in the Avatar series. I absolutely love it. I think it looks just beautiful. The characters themselves look like, you know, the same animation as they do in Legend of Korra, in the present day Legend of Korra, but, um, the, the backgrounds and just the way the scenery and just the, the actual, where, where the actual locations, they look amazing. And that's because uh, some of the artwork is very inspired by Japanese uh, woodblock paintings, which, you know, which is something I immediately thought of when I first saw some of this animation. It looked just so, you know, old and just so very unique and just gave this whole, you know, you know, past or, you know, earlier world its own feel, its own, well, look. It looked amazing, and if the ep rest of the episode was crap and just shit and for them for the pot at all, I still would have gave this a ten out of ten, just because you could have you could literally turn off the sound, mute it, do whatever, and just watch it, and you would still be just as entertained as you were, you know, with with the sound. In fact, I actually did have the chance to see this in HD on my HD TV, and god damn, did it look absolutely beautiful! It looked so just vibrant and all the colors popped out and just looked so amazing and the animation just looked awesome and this episode was also just a big fangasm episode because we got a lot of big callbacks not only to uh, you know past episodes of Legend of Korra but also to episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender uh, one of them being, in a big spoiler, the Lion Turtle. And this episode not only, um, you know, explains the origins of the first Avatar, but really the origins of bending to begin with, which a lot of people are kind of upset about, but I'll go into why I am not upset about that, and why a lot of people won't be upset about that. Um, in this episode, we do not, uh, we learn not only of the origins of the first Avatar, and how the whole reincarnation cycle began, but we also learned about where bending came from and how it gets passed on from, you know, person to person, genetically. Um, and I absolutely love the way that they did that. They, they say that the lion turtles, there were four lion turtle cities in the entire world, four elements, you know, water, earth, uh, fire, and air, or, you know, whatever. Um, there are four lion turtle cities that housed um, people and the lion turtles, you know, each four lion turtles gave those people who went out into the world and went to discover the world and, you know, come back and bring their people food or do whatever or just out there, you know, exploring the world. Um, each, uh, you know, distinct element, depending on, you know, who was in which lion turtle city, um, to protect themselves out in the world. And I thought that was great. And I really, really, you know, love that explained you know, where they got it from, and it also gave a nice little comeback, and actually gave, you know, a reason for the Lion Turtles to come back, instead of just, hey, let's bring back something that the fans really loved from the original series, just because, you know, all the fans love when we do that, actually gave a reason for bringing the Lion Turtles back, and I really, really loved that, and a lot of people are really upset that the Lion Turtles gave people bending, um, instead of what was said in the original Avatar series. In the original Avatar series, it was said that people weren't bending, bending from distinct animals, like b blind badger moles, you know, taught uh, earthbenders, or dragons taught the firebenders, or the moon taught the um, waterbenders, or the sky bison taught the uh, airbenders, or the air nomads. Um, and... I, at first, I was a bit upset about that because they, this episode did seem to retcon a lot of stuff just to make the plot for, you know, this particular episode and the plot of the rest of, the rest of Legend of Korra to be, you know, to, to work, just for the rest of the plot to work. But this is the way that I interpreted it. Um, I interpreted it as this. The Lion Turtles gave them their bending. The Lion Turtles gave each and every single person uh, bending but they learned how to actually use it as an extension of their body and actually learn techniques on how to correctly do it by the each, you know, element's distinctive animal. Like, they, they were given the power, but the animals you, uh, taught them, you know, distinctive moves instead of just... Like, the lion turtles who gave the people bending, the people who just didn't know what to do were just throwing it like, eh, whatever, here you go, here's fire. And the dragons or whatever, for example, taught them to do it, like, you know, karate style, which was horrible karate I just did, but, you know, 
that's the way that I interpreted it. Like, the lion turtles gave them bending, but the animals of, you know, each distinctive animal of each distinct element taught them how to use it correctly and use it in techniques. That's the way I interpreted it. Or you could also interpret it as these were stories that have been passed down many, many years, and as stories usually do get passed down from generation to generation, they usually get jumbled and mixed up a little bit. So maybe interpret it that way, like the story, you know, that was told of the origin of bending in the original Avatar series, which is a mix up, and this was the correct version. That's another way to interpret it, but I like to interpret it the way that the first time I said it, where the line tools just gave them bending, but the animals taught them how to use it correctly as an extension of their body. That's the way I like to think about it, and maybe that will help you guys, you know, calm, you know, down and, you know, get over that little part. But, um, this episode was just great. It was, it, again, unfair to give each episode its own rating, but, you know, it's a big super special I'm doing in this video, so I'm gonna give this a talent 10. This was a great episode. And Steven, um, Yoon, or Yun, um, who's from The Walking Dead, as I previously mentioned in one of my Legend of Korra, uh, videos many times, uh, very long time ago, uh, did a great job as one, uh, the, f the first Avatar, coincidentally named one. Hilarity, right? Uh, hilarious, right? Um, and honestly, if they do actually get around to making a Legend of Korra, or at least rebooting the uh, Avatar series and doing the last Airbender movies first, then Legend of Korra movies, I would love to see him personally play one. He was just, he did a great job, you know, voice wise, which is very cool. And I like that he did a great job. And I wasn't expecting him to do a good job because I haven't, I don't know if he, you know, has done voice work pre in, you know, previous works of his. But um, all I know him from is from The Walking Dead. So it was a big surprise to me that he actually did a great job with the voice work. So I was very happy about that. He did a great job and just brought a lot of humor and charisma to the character. Um, and I like that they established that he. You know, a lot of people will say that, you know, oh, he was kind of a douche at the beginning because he stole from the lion turtle and he lied to the lion turtle. You don't lie to the lion turtles. Um, but it was to help out his people and, you know, keep them from starving to death. When a bunch of, you know, fat kings and princes or whatever are eating atop the big castle and, you know, not giving a single scrap to the starving people, you know, below them. That was fine. I didn't mind that at all. He actually had a concrete reason to take the firebending from the lion turtle, just, not just because, you know, oh, hey, I want firebending because it sounds cool. No, I want to help out my people because my people are starving to death. My friends are starving to death, and I might starve to death. But I care more, more about my people. That's why I'm going to steal from the one person you just do not steal from. So I enjoyed that. I thought that was a great, you know, and even to the people that say that that was stupid and that was brash and, you know, too insensitive or whatever, he still redeemed himself by becoming the Avatar, by becoming, you know, the embodiment of spirits, and by becoming the bridge between the human world and the spirit world. He still made up for it, because he made up for two things, actually. One, the, you know, stealing from the Lion Turtle, and two, breaking Rava and Vatu, the dark, the light and the dark spirit, away from each other so that Vatu can now wreak havoc and, you know, bring dark spirits into the world and just spread darkness for 10,000 years which I really love that, which has actually opened up a uh, big rumor or speculation that uh, there will be a dark avatar because uh, Rava, um, the whole reason why the avatar reincarnation cycle, you know, had started was because uh, Rava had um, connected with Juan and that created the avatar state and the avatar reincarnation cycle and that's how the avatar is connected to the spirit world and the physical world. Um, and that's what some people are sort of speculating right now is that the same thing is going to happen with Vatu. He might, you know, connect with uh, Unalak or Varric or whatever. Um, I personally don't like this idea at all. I think it just is just kind of generic. Like, it really brings me back to something like the Power Ranger, for example, where it's like, well, we got to do episode when there's the opposite versions of them. Like, we have to have the evil version of the Power Rangers. This seems just generic to me because it just makes it sound like, oh, well, we need to do the uh, we need to do the anti version of the Avatar. We need to have the antithesis of the Avatar. I don't think it's really that great of an idea. I, I hope that they don't do it. But then again, it does, you know, open a very interesting idea and you never know what they're going to do with it. So I am open to it, but, you know, I'm kind of hoping that they don't do it. But if they do, I hope they do something interesting with it. So I'm fine with that. Um, this episode overall was just great. I love this episode. I thought it was... A spectacular episode made up for those last two pieces of shit episodes and pretty much made up for the re for the you know faulty episodes 
you know, that have been seen before. Um, so yeah, that's really all I have to say about those four episodes. So it was a, you know, long video, but I was talking about four episodes of The Legend of Korra, so what are you going to do? Um, and it's my videos and my channel, so again, what are you going to do? Uh, so overall, uh, you know, just a quick recap of the episodes. Bad, bad, amazing, even more awesome. Uh, I thought it was great. I thought it was a really, really awesome episode. It's kind of funny how it went from, you know, uh, him saying that, you know, oh, I'm going to be the Avatar, and I'm going to keep the people from fighting with the spirits, and then he just dies. Uh, it was both very, very sad and very, very funny, once you realize it. It's like, huh, he died, even though he said he wasn't. That was, that was pretty funny. And I like that they, st and I just like this overall feeling of the episode, because this is one story. Like, whenever there's, you know, another avatar, whenever they're talking about, like, a avatar after one, like, say, Korra or Aang, um, I don't know how to explain this, but it's like, this av this person was another person before, but with one, you especially feel for him, and you especially are more behind him than even Aang or Korra, because Aang and Korra are one. Nobody, Warren was never anybody else before. He was just himself. And he started this whole reincarnation cycle. And that's why he's probably the most special out of all the Avatars. Because, well, one, he's one, or one. And he started it all, and he's his, he's his own person. I really like that whole idea. I like that you especially care for him. want to see him make it through because... And you especially are really invested in them because... He's himself. Like, no, he was not anybody else before him. Those are the other avatars. Every other avatar after one is one, but one is just himself. I really like that idea, and I really liked that. It made me especially care for the character. I really want to see him make it, th make it through. Of course, we know he makes it through, but, you know, it really made me want to see that. I'm just going to take this off. Uh, but that's all I have to say about these episodes. Sorry, again, it was a long video, but just had a lot to say and get off my chest about these episodes. I'm finally caught up, and I can get back to my weekly Legend of Korra reviews. Um, so, that's about that. We're also getting two more, two last one-hour premieres. One is going to be, uh, the week before the finale, and then we actually get the finale, which is the last, you know, one-hour premiere. Uh, so, that's really great. Um, so that, so that brings to four, you know, one-hour premieres and one-hour specials for this whole Avatar, uh, Legend of Korra book two, which I think makes up um, incredibly for the uh, last season, because the last season, we only had two one-hour premieres, which was the, you know, series premiere and the season finale, so that's really cool. I'm just gonna end it right here, it's a very, very long video, so I'll see you guys soon with more videos. I had a very happy Halloween, and if you had a ha happy Halloween, then let me know, because I like to know some stuff like that. And that's all I have to say about that, so I will see you guys soon with more videos. Take care.